Taking the derivative of x to a power is so easy that you're just going to love this if you don't already know the power rule. So to take this derivative of x to any, any power, to any exponent, then this is just going to be, you bring the exponent down and multiply by x, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So let's look at an, at an example of that. So, if we have the derivative of x cubed, well, we just bring that 3 down, multiply by x, and then 3 minus 1 is 2, so it's what's left is x squared. And that is, is the power rule. It's so easy to use, it, it, it's really a wonderful thing. So, let's just do some more examples. What if we have uh, the derivative of x to the one-half? Or, sorry, I, I gave it away. I meant the square root of x. Well, this is the same thing as x to the one-half. So, we can write the square root as a power and then use the power rule on it. And this is going to be equal to 1 half, you bring the 1 half down, times by x, and then it's 1 half minus 1, which is the same thing as negative 1 half. So this is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half, which simplifies nice and neat to 1 over 2 times the square root of x. x to the negative 1 half is just the square root in the denominator. Okay, so now we can take the derivative of the square root of x. And in fact, that's, we, we don't have to stop there. We can start taking the derivative uh, of lots of things that are more complicated than that. Oop. I meant to change my color there. There we go. So let's take the derivative of, oh, I don't know, the cubed root of x to the fifth. Well, again, the, the key to solving this problem is just to rewrite this as a power. So this is the same thing as x to the 5 thirds. And to take this derivative, we just use a power rule. So 5 thirds x, and then 5 thirds minus 1 is just 2 thirds. So this is 5 thirds x to the 2 thirds. Let me just clean that up by rewriting it as 5 times the cubed root of x squared all over 3. Okay, what happens if we have a coefficient? Well, nothing different. The coefficient just stays where it is and, and we multiply. So let's look at, at an example of that. What if we have the derivative of something like 7 over 5 times the cubed root of x? Well, let's let's just do what we've been doing and rewrite this to to something where we could write it as a power, so we could take the power rule. So this is the same thing as saying seven fifths times x to the negative one third. And now we can easily take the power rule. The negative one third will come down. Negative one third times by seven fifths and then times by x to the one, negative one-third minus one is negative four-thirds. Okay, and now all we have to do is simplify. So this becomes negative seven, oops, over 15 times by x to the negative four-thirds. Now we can send that to the denominator and rewrite it back as a root. So this will be negative 7 over 15 times the third root of x to the fourth. Sorry that got so small. I hope you can read that. But taking, so, so you can see that, that the key to, to using the power rule, especially when the, the expressions get a little more complicated, is to recognizing it as a power rule. In other words, we need to recognize that this can be rewritten as a power, and then we can just use the power rule on it. 
So that's it. That's the power rule. And, and now hopefully it, it comes very natural to you. Okay. See you in the next video.